day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. It's a little bit of a noisy day here as we explore a little bit of Jamestown, New York, but I think you know what we're gonna do today. You can't come to Jamestown and not pay tribute and appreciation to maybe the greatest female comedian of all time, great Lucille Ball, woman who really changed the face of television and put a smile on her face while doing it. Days with Jordan the Lion, Jamestown, New York, Lucille Ball, it begins right now. Lucy was born here, she moved away, came back, and wow, look at this. Not only do they have the birthplace of Lucille Ball, you can see right up here, they have a Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz Museum, but it's also home of Robert H. Jackson and home of the 10,000 Maniacs. Holy cow, I just passed a riverboat. She has a riverboat in her town. Lucille Ball Memorial Park that I wanted to show you first. They have a statue to Lucy. A really good one too. Carolyn Palmer is the artist. Childhood home, the first lady of comedy they're saying. Celeron is, but she was born in Jamestown. This is when the family came back, they came back here. Look, she's standing on her star. It's a nice touch. Oh, and it's even got the Lucy heart. Sorry, Lucy, not looking up your dress. Wow, they nailed it. Look at her, wow. That is dead on. All the way down to her handbag. But not only do they have a Lucy statue, or one Lucy statue, they actually have two. They have another one right over here. And this is a different artist. But this is Vitamina Vegemin. I kind of like the other one better, but I appreciate that they have two. That's kind of cool would not have expected it. All right, let's go see Lucy's final resting place. I thought today we would visit Lucille Ball and her family at the family plot here at Lakeview Cemetery in Jamestown, New York. I feel like all of my all of the favorite women I've ever known in my life always called Lucille Ball their favorite comedian. That's quite something for all of the funny men and women to have lived and for so many people to find her to be the best. As you drive along, you kind of get a few hints as you make your way through the cemetery as to how to find Lucy. And I noticed right over here, they even have a I Love Lucy trash can. It looks good. Definitely looks good, I like it. So from the I Love Lucy trash can, you're gonna turn around and you're gonna go right up here and they even have an arrow right here. With a heart, start you on your journey that guides you right to Lucy. And the whole Hunt family. There's Dora Hunt, Elvin Hunt, Glenn Hunt. That was her mother's side. We all love Lucy. Hello, Lucy. She was not originally buried here. She was originally buried in Los Angeles. She was buried at Forest Lawn. And this is Henry Ball. This would have been, this is okay, so this has actually a couple of names on it. Henry Ball was her father 
who passed away very young. I think he was 28, 29 years old. So Henry Ball and then Desiree Hunt Ball was Lucy's mother. Then of course, Lucille Desiree Ball Morton. You've come home and Fred Henry Ball, that was Lucy's younger brother. Now Fred, her younger brother, ended up living with her in Hollywood eventually, once he graduated high school. He was named after Lucy's beloved grandpa, Fred Hunt. And then her grandmother, Floribel, was the one who actually delivered Lucy in the family home. And then you'll see there's some other Hunt family names over here. Reuben Hunt, Lola Hunt. But the story is here. Lucy was born here in town and they didn't live here very long, just a couple of months. The family moved out to Montana, then I believe Michigan. Then they came back and Lucy's father got really sick and he ended up passing away. So her mother worked in, I believe, a hat store. And um, her grandpa basically became her father figure because even though Desiree did get remarried, Lucy was excited for him to be her father. And when she said if she could ask him if he, she could call him father, he said, no, just call me by my first name. So she never really had that. So Fred was very good to the kids. Fred would be very good to Lucy. And Lucy was kind of a fireball, as you can imagine. She used to get into fights with boys at school and she would stick up for her younger brother. And she was just, you know, just a basic firecracker. And she never really showed any like talent for singing or dancing or anything like that. But eventually her mother would decide to send her off to a performing arts school to help her develop to become a performer and she just the school wrote her and basically said Lucille just doesn't have any talent and her mother would even here in town because they ended up coming back to town um, and living for most of Lucy's later childhood and teen years they would take her to a photographer to get good photos for her to be a model and the photographer would say She's not real photogenic, it's hard to get good photos of her. But she persisted because something bad that happened was that her beloved grandfather was trying to do something nice and he got young Fred, Lucy's younger brother, right around his 12th birthday, got him a, got him a gun. Got him a little gun that he could go out and shoot cans and taught him how to shoot cans and one day Fred let his girlfriend used the gun out in their front lawn. They were shooting at cans and she closed her eyes and shot and ended up hitting the neighbor boy and severing his spine. And the family, he, he did survive, but he was never able to walk again. And the family ended up suing Fred Hunt because he had bought the gun. They claimed he was negligent and the courts ruled in their favor and they took his house that he had just paid off. They took all of his money, which was $4,000, and they also basically put him on a uh, county arrest where he couldn't leave the county. So he ended up having to stay with family and the family treated him really bad. Lucy eventually found out, she had went off to New York and was working as a, like in dress shops and stuff as a model and was going to school and she found out that he was being treated really badly in the house and that he was only being fed strawberries and nothing else. And she went to the house of the family members and threw a fit and just vowed that she was gonna make a success of herself to help her grandpa. And he was the one that, if you saw the vlog that I did on Lucy's house on Ogden Drive, where she was accused of being a communist because she had attended a communist meeting at one point in her life, it was because of her, her grandfather. He was, in the early days, I think he had attended a meeting and he had told the the kids to attend. He told Lucy and Fred to attend and they just always kind of listened to what he said, but they never participated in anything. So that became a problem in her life. But Lucy did eventually 
get a, she got like a screen test basically. Somebody had seen her performing in New York and found out that she was a model for a dress shop. Called there and offered her a screen test. She went out and nothing really came of it. But then they saw that she was funny. She was doing things, you know, when it wasn't for the audition that made people laugh. And she ended up getting a contract to work for Goldwyn. Became one of the Goldwyn girls. She wasn't, like I said, she wasn't a good dancer or a good singer or anything, but she was likable and she was funny. And she would say, if you need me to do something, I can learn it. And that was a big thing in those days. People liked her. So Lucy's natural likability did lead to a pretty good career. She was getting movie parts because she was under contract and they were loaning her out and everything. She was just very likable. But the problem was that she wasn't getting any lead parts or anything really that great. She was happy with it. She, she was heard to have said like, I just want to work. I, I just enjoy being there and I don't care how big this stuff is. But she started to date a producer that was interested in her career from RKO and she found out the producer was married. She didn't know that. And he claimed to have had real feelings for her and was gonna leave his family and everything for Lucy. And Lucy just thought about it and she just said she just didn't really wanna be a homewrecker and she didn't think that, that he really did love her. She wasn't sure, but she just said, since he's already married, I'm not touching it. I'm, and basically told him I'm not interested. He lost all interest in her career and quit helping get her things at RKO. And then his wife found out about all this and she had powerful family members in the business and they basically put a black ball, not on Lucy working, but just saying she will never make it to A-list movies. She will never be an A-list star. And so she found out about that, continued to work whatever she could, but she started dipping her toes into radio and was really popular in radio. People started to like her and wanted to hire her a lot in radio. What do we know Lucy for? I love Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, AKA, you know, Desi Arnaz. So that all came about. She had broke her leg. Somebody had asked her to do a prat fall on a skating rink as a joke for a photo. She ended up breaking her leg and a friend of hers took her out to see Desi Arnaz show his, with his orchestra. And she was just smitten by him. She just saw that he had a star quality right away. And he was already, you know, being seen by film companies, knowing that they were interested and they put him in, it's called Too Many Girls, and he just lit up the screen and they were falling in love heavy, but they weren't letting anybody know about it. And when his movie was premiering in Chicago, she went to the premiere and um, took a cab to it to meet him there and he flipped out about it. And so that was like kind of her first sign that things were not gonna be perfect with him, that he, he had a little bit of a fiery temper and everything, but, she was madly in love with him and he would, even though they would fight back and forth about little things, a lot of it was um, probably not unfounded because it was her being jealous, thinking he was up to something when they weren't together and him trying to reassure, hey, give me the benefit of the doubt, I'm not doing anything. Um, he just, you know, he was always kind of gone and so then he wanted to get married and wanted to elope so they ended up doing that thinking on her part that it would make things better and really nothing changed. Things would get a little bit better, but then they would go back to the same and she just kind of realized she was probably never gonna see that Desi that she had seen early on, but they wanted to work together because they did get along working and everything and they had a great sense of humor together, but nobody would hire them to work together. So they did a theater show, kind of a, just a few around the country and just to gauge people's interest and it was really successful. So I believe it was Philip Morris had decided they wanted to um, finance a show and they wanted them to film it in New York. They didn't want to film in New York. They didn't want to leave LA. So the deal was that Desi said he would take a thousand dollars less per week and they wanted to film it in Los Angeles, but that he wanted the rights to the show. He wanted to own the show. And that was a brilliant move on his part. Because with that meant that Lucy and Desi got to cast the show. They basically got to produce the show. They got to do everything and have everything the way they wanted it, work with the people they wanted. Pretty much got a perfect cast. And it was the number one show for years. Even with the accusations eventually that would come of Lucy. And I think it came like a week before they were gonna start their new season. 
accusing Lucy of being a communist, Desi came out to the crowd that was there the first night and said the only thing read about Lucy is her hair and that she's one of us, she's an American and she loves this country and all was forgotten. People just let that whole fiasco, that whole um, tabloid drama fall by the wayside. Now Lucy was always the saver. She liked to save money, but Desi liked to spend. And one of his brilliant ideas was to form Desi Lu, and he ran that for 10 years before eventually deciding that, well basically what happened was he and Lucy got a divorce. They got a divorce once because she was tired of his antics and he showed up the night before uh, the divorce at her house and you know said how much he loved her, spent the night and everything and then when she woke up the next day he said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to get a divorce. And then went and got the divorce, came back and he said, you know, you were right to do that. Next time I get married I'm gonna I'm gonna really treat the person great and I'm gonna give them everything and this and that. And she basically said the same thing and then they looked at each other and agreed, if that's what we're gonna do, why don't we do it for each other? And they decided to get back together. <laughs> but eventually it just, it got to a point where Desi wasn't coming home. He just wasn't coming home anymore. And she was tired of it. So she wanted a divorce, got a divorce, and then they started working on another show together, The Lucy Show. But it was just too weird because Lucy had met a new man, Gary, and Gary was in love with Lucy right away. Even went to her business manager and said, hey, I wanna marry Lucy, and I want you to draw a contract saying that I get nothing and that I, you know, I'm, I don't want anything from her, none of her possessions, none of her money, anything, I just love the woman. And she loved Gary, and they got married, and Desi was producing her show, Gary was on the set, and Lucy just couldn't handle it, so, after all those years of Desi running everything, Lucy bought him out. Now we definitely have to mention how groundbreaking I Love Lucy was because it was so great. It was, you know, this uh, Cuban guy who's a, a local star and his wife who wants to be a star and they're always squabbling back and forth and she's always trying to do things behind his back and everything, but they were the first show to actually show someone pregnant. It had never been done before and Lucy was pregnant and they decided to work with it in the show itself and people loved it and countless TV shows since then have done that but it took one to start it and they were the ones. Now, I'm not sure why Lucy was originally buried in Hollywood other than you know she lived there but you would think that she would have always wanted to be buried here with her family in the family plot. I mean she was so close to every member of her family. Like I said Fred moved out there and lived out there with her when he graduated high school. So she was, you know, she was very involved with her family. It's nice to see that her kids eventually decided to have her ashes moved here because they were originally in just this little tiny niche plot in Hollywood Hills Cemetery. And it's just, I mean, I've went there since she's been moved. And to, I, I mean, if you walked in there and looking for, even with her name on there, it would have been hard to find because it's, it's so, such a nondescript, forgettable room that she was in. Now at least she's back home where she had roots. You've come home. I've been so lucky to get to become friends with Todd Fisher who is Debbie Reynolds' son because he has a lot of Lucy stories. When he got his first apartment, he was moving into the apartment and got a knock on the door and there was Lucy and Debbie Reynolds wanting to see what he was up to, wanting to check out the new place and it was Lucy that got Debbie into playing golf and that's how Todd got into golf. His first clubs were Desi's clubs, an old pair of Desi's clubs and Todd's an avid golfer to this day. My how you touched lives Lucy. And wouldn't your father have been proud. You can see all the messages people have left out here. Been very respectful out here. The town is just an absolute beautiful place dedicated to Lucy's memory. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I know you're thinking, well, are we gonna see anything else? Yes, we will see more Lucy stuff. I'm not gonna check out any of her houses. She actually had a couple of places. She had a birth house here, and then she had a couple of different locations they came back to and moved and, and everything from. Not gonna do those today. I'll save those for another time but we will check out her museum, so come back and we'll check out the Desi and Lucy Museum. Have a great night. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, please ring the bell for notifications, and we'll see you all next time. Have a great night.
and goodbye. <laughs>